when we aggregate those numbers across uh, about 1,100 metres, you get uh, you get close to I think it was about 1,055 metres at 0.5% copper equivalent, which by world standards is uh, is is good on any measure. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm joined once again by Tom Pickett, who is the Executive Chairman of Kaninda Resources. Kaninda Resources are focused on a drilling campaign at their Mount Kaninda Copper, Gold and Silver project in Queensland. Tom, uh, great to see you again today. We, we spoke um, back in June, I believe, when uh, we talked about uh, Hole 10. Um, and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the, 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 you started off with uh, seven uh, you were planning seven drill holes in this campaign, but it's 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 expanded and expanded and expanded. And I, I believe this week you've you've put out uh, results for hole twelve. We'll come on to that in a little bit. But when we spoke last time, I mentioned we talked about hole ten. But then almost straight away, you, you brought out some results. You started putting out results from hole eleven, which were pretty impressive. So do you want to just take us through um, what you found in hole eleven? Sure. Yeah, as I said, I think last time we spoke, uh, Mount Kaninda is the gift that keeps on giving. And so we have continued our, uh, our drilling campaign from those planned seven holes. And uh, we've announced, as you said, uh, hole 10, and we've gone into hole 11 with some, uh, with some pretty impressive results at uh, the top section of the hole. So that gave us uh, a very interesting 295 metres at 1.14% uh, copper equivalent in the top section of the hole. Uh, the middle section of that was uh, filled with some nice, uh, nice gold numbers. Uh, we um, we're sort of happy about getting about 23, 24 metres at nearly two grams per tonne gold in the middle section, mm -hmm. and then there was some good copper and gold towards the lower section of the hole. So when we aggregate those numbers across uh, about 1,100 metres, you get uh, you get close to I think it was about 1,055 metres at 0.5% copper equivalent, which by world standards, is, uh, is is good on any measure. Absolutely. I mean, we're a lot deeper this hole than the, than the other ones, the earlier ones. What, what's, what does this sort of mean for the for the potential for the project? Yeah. Look, we we did decide to take it a, a bit further than the uh, than the other holes, and the reason behind that was we were still seeing some interesting mineralisation down low. Uh, we did see a little bit of chalcopyrite coming in, very low. So we're still getting up, you know, half a percent um, of copper down at uh, 1,085 metres. And any time you, you're sort of seeing that, it, it, it begs the question of what, what else might be going on down there. So we, we continued the quest a little bit deeper. And certainly when you do that, it gives us a, a significant amount of data as to what might be going on and, and what could be trending in, in varying directions within the, uh, the mineralisation. So it allowed us to... Uh, to put together the pieces of the puzzle a little bit better and uh, and perhaps vector some future holes a, a little bit smarter. Absolutely. So in the, in the future, would you would you potentially go back um, over some of the, the previous ground you've, you've looked at and got, go, go a bit deeper and see if there's uh, extensions down there? Well, I think um, that certainly is, is possible, but uh, our focus at the moment is to extend the strike both in the north and in the south. And we have the, the rig currently in the southern section. Uh, we've just completed hole 13 and we're into uh, a fairly significant depth of hole 14 now. Um, so the idea is that we were, would be looking for uh, some good mineralisation relatively deep to the, to the south or southwest of where we are. Uh, and then uh, similarly in the north, um, and that sort of leads into that hole 12 discussion we're going to get into about what's kind of going on in the north northeastern section. So yes, it is possible that we will go deeper in other parts, um, but probably more likely when we start doing a little bit more infill drilling rather than the expansive drilling that we're doing at the moment. Mm, absolutely. What is? I mean, remind our viewers what is the actual extent of your 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 uh, you know your drilled area at the moment. The strike at the moment. Yeah, look, it's it's, it's ever increasing. A uh, whole whole thirteen will will add hopefully a little bit to that. Uh, probably about two hundred and fifty meters of of extended strike depending upon how those numbers come back from the lab but we uh we're fairly confident in our abilities to produce some good good results as as we have seen in the uh in the more recent past um so look it's it's likely to be somewhere in the order of uh four to five hundred meters uh of strike as uh what was sort of previously understood to be about 250 maybe 300 meters so um 
that's impressive. We just need to do a little bit more in terms of understanding what's going on at depth in those areas, but certainly it's uh, it's looking quite good and certainly worthy of us continuing the quest in this current drilling campaign from what was, as I said, the planned uh, small number of holes to now being up to hole 14 and we've got a further at least five planned from here. Exactly. Um, well, let's talk about uh, hole 12. What did, you, what did you find in that? Yeah, hole 12 was the, uh, the the most recent hole that we released to the market and that uh, was a very impressive 126 metres at point. Uh, 0.03% copper equivalent. Um, sorry, that was 180 at 1.03% uh, copper equivalent. It was 126 metres at basically 1% copper, which is extremely impressive. Uh, it certainly did everything that we wanted it to do. Uh, it was punching uh, out further to the northeast and deeper than any other hole. Uh, and it's opened up our understanding of what, uh, what we can achieve uh, in that northern, northern section. Uh, such that um, uh, the most, or I guess the the future planned holes uh, are are aiming at what we uh, what we located uh, in uh, hole 12, and we'll continue to push out to that to that northeast section. So uh, very impressive, 126 metres uh, at one percent copper is nothing to sneeze at by uh, by any measure. Mm, absolutely, and also I mean. It's... It was it was you drilled at sort of right angles to hole nine and eleven to try and so sort of help you understand better what was going on in those holes as well. Do you want to sort of explain how that works? Yeah, it, it came across at depth um, nine and eleven, so at right angles to those holes, and it linked up the mineralisation as b between those two areas. So you, you generally don't get a, a very clear understanding as to what's going between two holes unless you drill between those two holes, which is exactly what what we've achieved. Um, and it does, as I said, give us a, a much clearer understanding as to, to what uh, is happening in both in terms of the tonnage that we're looking at, but also in, in terms of where things are heading uh, for us to vector our future drill holes. Mm. Um, and can you give us an update on the progress of, of the following holes, uh, you know, uh, hole 13 and, and then you're saying you're, you're, you're almost completed 14 as well? Yeah, so hole 13 is completed. As I said, uh, that was uh, we pulled that up just past 600 metres uh, and we're currently into about 300 metres of hole 14. Um, hole 13 is at, well, most of the hole is at the uh, lab uh, awaiting assays. Uh, the last portion of that hole, I think, is still being cut uh, to be sent off to the lab. So we're expecting those results within a few weeks from now. Mm, absolutely. Um, and then and then hole 14 continuing, when do you expect that to be uh, completed? Hole 14 is an interesting one because it's it's being drilled essentially in the exact opposite direction of most of the other holes. So um, it, it's going to show us a bit more about the thickness of what we're dealing with. Uh, we have drilled in many, many different directions. So we haven't just been drilling one. Uh, there's there's a, a, a good chance that we're going to continue hole 14 for some time because uh, there's... Uh, there's every indication that we uh, that we should continue uh, at the moment. I can't really say too much, but we're uh, we're very happy with where we're at at the moment. I look forward to hearing some results from that. Um, last time we spoke, you mentioned that you were doing some down a hole uh, geophysics um, to try and sort of ex ex expand uh, the targets, so your exploration targets north and south. T tell us a little bit about what you found there. Yeah, look, we we did start doing we did start to uh, plan that process. The unfortunate thing that happened there was uh, we got. Uh, the plans shifted as a result of some weather. Uh, we do still intend to continue that geophysics and we have actually come up with a, uh, a more expanded plan for that geophysics survey, geophysical survey. Uh, and I was only discussing with our geologists this morning that we may end up doing some, uh, some downhole um, geophysics in relation to the, the current hole 14. So with the, the weather event changed plans, sending our rig further to the south a few hundred metres, but in so doing, we've also then extended our uh, understanding of that southern section, so it's not been all bad. Mm. It's an outdoor business. You can't, you can't expect everything to work as smoothly as it is. Yeah, this is true. Before. This is true. Uh, and look, when you're getting the sort of results that we are in terms of the intercepts that we're getting and, and the fact that in, on any measure on, on the world scale, they're actually quite good, uh, you've got to be happy with that and be uh, you know, able to adapt so that uh, we've got in, at any given time a few holes planned and we can just move to the ones that will be more suitable if weather events occur. Absolutely. Um, can we talk a little bit about funding? Um, I still see you, you recently raised another uh, two million. Um, sort of your, your investors are showing good confidence, yeah? Yeah, look, I think our, our our runs are on the board in terms of our ability to raise capital. I don't uh, I don't have 
uh, any concerns there, both in terms of our ability to raise it, but also the support that's been given by our existing and, and also some new shareholders. So uh, the, the plans that we have in place uh, are well supported and I see no reason why we can't continue them. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of sort of plans uh, for the next few months, obviously, you know, you've got some, uh, you know, drill results pending, but, but what, are, what, what should investors be looking out for? Well, really, I mean, anytime you've got an environment that we're in at the moment where most governments around the world have, have come under pressure for this green energy transition and the, and the, the push towards mining all these uh, critical metals, copper being uh, predominant, um, you know, cobalt, nickel, lithium, um, anytime you've got this push going on, the, the idea should be that you are building something that could turn into a mine one day. And that's exactly what we are striving to do. But before it becomes a mine, we actually have to show just how big this animal is. And that's what we intend to do for the next little while is continue that expansive drilling, uh, continue to improve the size. And so going forward, there'll be more news flow in terms of drilling results, but also uh, some idea of the size that we're dealing with. Mm, absolutely. Well, we look forward to uh, hearing from you again very soon and when you get some more results out from, from 13 and 14. But uh, congratulations on the results you've had so far uh, and look forward to speaking to you soon again, Tom. Thanks. Much appreciated. Cheers.